and welcome to our first ever podcast um, that's yet to be named. The uh, Nameless Podcast. The Nameless Podcast. No name. My name is Chris. I am joined by my brothers, Adam and Eric. How are you doing? This is sad. And <laughs> it is. And we're going to talk about games, essentially, that we've played in the past. Uh, games we're looking forward to, etc., etc., over the series. Uh, we're going to start off by talking about yeah, since we're in 2020 and we're starting this podcast off, we're going to start by looking at games from the last decade. Uh, so for this first episode, we're going to look at our favorite games from 2010. Um, compare them, discuss them, and open up a discussion to everyone else. So before we get into looking at the 2010 games, maybe we should talk about, in general, the kind of games we like. Um so that people maybe have an idea of sort of the games we gravitate towards. So yeah. I feel like I'm talking an awful lot. Yeah, well. So I would like someone else to speak <laughs> up. <laughs> That's no problem. So, Eric. Right. Uh, why don't we start with you? What kind of games do you like? Uh, In general. Well, thank you for having me, Chris. Um, <laughs> uh, so that's a brilliant question. I'm not gonna lie. That slow laugh you heard is Adam. You're gonna yeah. hear that a lot. Uh, He's he a slow laugh. Delayed. There'll be a joke, and then the <laughs> cough <laughs> <laughs> afterwards. Yeah. Uh, so games I like to play are anything where I can really customize the character. I suppose so. RPGs really are something I love, and especially choice-based games. So where my choices matter, something where there's a great lore to the world, even if it's set in our own world in our own time, something that's got something I can really delve into, something to really make the brain think is what I love. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> and would you like a job here at the studio? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what really makes me think, Ted? I think... <laughs> it's like, uh, here's my it's CV. Pr- yeah, it's like, it's, impress me, Eric. <laughs> Okay, Adam. <laughs> what kind of games do you like? Well, firstly, let's just let's just start off with the our first console. Oh yeah. Well, so yeah, I, I suppose it's be the same for my me. first console was probably your first console. Yeah, yeah. and you know what? Funny, your second console was my second console, and your third console. Well, that was my third. But I think that first and I console. I have my own fourth console. That's. <laughs> <laughs> you may have bought that yourself. I did buy that one myself. No, but the first console I think is what really gets you into the type of games you're into. Mm-hmm. Going down the line. So the PlayStation One. Oh yeah. Was the first console we had. Mm-hmm. Was it not the Game Boy Color? The Game Boy Color. I can't. I don't think I'm so. I'm not going to count it as a console. It's a console, but I don't think it was. It's I think I had. Well, I think I had the PS One first. First, okay. And it was just a batch of games that came with it. And I wasn't going to ask my dad where he got it. Okay, it was. It was kind of dodgy. It wasn't an that? original box. My dad. We might not all have the same dad. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a birthday present, I think. Yeah. Again, I sounded very so. dodgy. Yeah, <laughs> I think it was a birthday <laughs> present, but the. And I think the Game Boy Color that is the first one that I purchased with my own oh, money. Oh, okay. Um, but it was after the PS One because I think it was ninety nine when I got the Game Boy, but ninety eight I think for the PS One, ninety seven, ninety eight. Uh, so the f- game that really gravitated towards would have been Metal Gear Solid. Oh yeah. Yep. And that's the sole reason I went for PS One. So at the time there was. PlayStation 1 or N64. Mm-hmm. And everyone on the schoolyard is talking about that. It's like you're talking either Final Fantasy 7, Lara Croft, or Pokemon Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's kind a, of the, yeah. what you gravitate towards. So I remember uh, my best friend at the time was talking about this game. And he's like, do you like James Bond? Yeah, I love James Bond. Do you like dinosaurs? Yeah, I fucking love dinosaurs. Like, <laughs> do you like do you like fucking robots man do you like robots that's my man Power Rangers is where I'm at if you tell me there's like the, the, the Red Ranger robotic dinosaur in this it's like there's a robotic dinosaur in this yeah yeah and you get to play as this James Bond character who takes down this robotic dinosaur man I'm in yeah you have me sold <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I got into Metal Gear Solid which would be my all time favourite oh game. Yes. Yeah. That's uh, fair enough. That's 
That's very fair enough. That's so up there. every game after that that I really gravitate towards. Now, obviously, I'll, over this, you, you'll hear a huge array of games that I've mm-hmm. played. But it's always going to be mostly third-person, action-adventure, story-driven, character-driven. Yeah. Huge plot twists. Yeah. And game mechanics that serve... The story. the story, yeah, completely the purpose. serve the yeah. story. None of this and not climbing towers just for viewpoints, so you have something else yeah. to do. Not, that's, oh, yeah, but it's good landscape, like, yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> a great to keep shaping. Not <laughs> so, that that is that's where I'm at, and that's the road, that's the trajectory. Yeah, I, I suppose for me, when I got into games, and I, I was thinking about it the other day, and it really resonated towards the kind of games I like, which is that I started as a spectator before I became a player. In that, yes, you had the PS1, mm-hmm. and you were playing the games, and I, they weren't mine, but I was watching, and it was nearly like watching a movie, or watching cartoons, or just watching visuals, um, and the one that sticks with me the most, always, is Final Fantasy VII, because I remember watching the bombing mission over and over and over, and Sorry. never <laughs> getting sick of it, because, yeah, none of us knew you could equip a potion. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that fucking Scorpion Guard's laser killed Barton Cloud every time. I was pretty shocked there was more to the game after that. <laughs> I know, yeah. Because like, there was the three discs and I think I remember seeing all the Metal Gear Solid as well first and like it gets to a certain point where you change disc. So, and like it was long but it wasn't nearly as long. So every time something at all happened in Final Fantasy VII, I was like, this is the end of disc one. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And like, I remember like getting to mid, the end of Midgar, and it's like, oh, this is the end of disc one. And it's like, holy shit, there's a whole other game to this. So for me, um, because I wasn't playing the games at first, I was definitely more interested in the story, the plot twists, the characters, the worlds, the lore. And so when I got into playing, yes, similarly... If the gameplay didn't serve the story, I usually wasn't all that interested. Mm-hmm. And as long as there was... Sort of, like, I, I kind of treat games as, like, books for me. It's like it's like reading a book. Like I like to play pretty much on my own, like a big loner. Yeah. And just get... <laughs> I'd use it as escapism and get lost into it and be, like, shown a new story that's not based on anything that's, you know, designed by artists and developers and takes it somewhere brand new. Uh, which is why, like purely multiplayer online games are usually not not your thing you probably won't find them in any of my lists there could be one somewhere that excites me but sorry League of Legends players you're not going to find it (laughs) in my Mm. in my repertoire but I get why other people like them I think some people started games for fun I don't want to have fun when I play (laughs) 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 I want a game that tear jerks me you know I want a game (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I play more for the story for the characters, definitely. Um, but yeah, the gameplay has to be fun too. But yeah, I think we're all similar on that point of, yeah, character story yes. is our main focus when it comes to all of our games. Yeah, and I think that's probably going to show when we start talking about our yeah. favorite games. Because the ones that come up are probably going to be the ones that every year that might not always be what was the game of the year. Some of them probably mm-hmm. will be. Like so, some of them will probably surprise people. I think. Yeah, there's probably going to be a couple of head scratchers, but hopefully we can entice people to go back and visit some of these if they haven't played them before. Yes, because they're definitely worth exploring. Oh yeah, especially if you're into story-driven games and the gameplay. Generally, for a lot of these, are fun. It's yeah, not yeah. like they're. It's not like they're crap games. Yeah. No. Um, well, like, well I, there might be one or two in there that might be a bit shit, but like, yeah, we'll, we'll just agree with each other. <laughs> but but we, like, I mean, I suppose the uh, first thing that happens when you start any game is um, the story or the setting will kick off first. If that doesn't draw you in, you're probably not going to keep playing. And then next, you experience your gameplay. And if the gameplay isn't good, you're also not going to keep playing. Yeah. Probably. So any of the games we talk about will probably tick both those boxes. For the most part, but then yes, we yeah. might disagree with each other. Yeah, we'll see. No. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we're going to look at the year 2010 then. So, we're going to go back as far as then. Oh, sure, when I was just a chap. Sure, when I was just a lad in school. Um, back in the day. Back in the day. Um, which is weird because 
Well, actually, when I look back on the last... Because I, 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 when I was looking back on the games, I was... Um, it doesn't seem that long ago. 2010? Yeah, no, like, 2010 seems like a long time ago. But, but playing the, the games does Playing the games. I'm so, sort of surprised how old some of the games are. Um, hmm. That's because games are immortal, man. They yeah. live in our hearts and memories. Yeah, because, like, a lot of them have been remastered. I know, So yeah. you've experienced them recently anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah. The, it's true, yeah. Sometimes, I suppose sometimes when you're playing a... If you start with a, if you play a remaster, you kind of think that's the year it came out or something, or you yeah. you forget how old it actually is. Yeah. Um, but okay, let's start with Adam. No, start with that way. <laughs> you think so? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just for now. Well, I'll go first then. You go first. <laughs> <laughs> I've been dictated. I kind of wanted to go the other way and come back around to me, but oh. fair enough. Uh, so I actually struggled between two games. In particular, like we all made like lists of three games or so uh, for our own personal lists to decide which game was our favorite from 2010. The third game for me that I put down, it was only oh, really so you've gone through all three of them just to be there. Well, I'm just for, for my own head, like when I was going through which one was actually my favorite. The only reason I'm saying it is for context. Like the, the third game I had on my list was like, I'm really only putting it there to have three games, but actually it doesn't come close to my top two okay. my top two I struggled between to pick a top one because I love them both very closely for very different reasons but one of them I think took the top spot purely for how much there is to do in it and that's Mass Effect 2 by Bioware mm-hmm. which I think I think is fair to say is their crowning achievement I think it's the best game that they've ever made and I'm talking about out of their Dragon Age games their Knights of the Old Republic games, their Mass Effect games. I don't think they've topped Mass Effect 2. Um, and I know... I know you've played it. I've... Yeah, i played Mass Effect 2. I've played many of so Bioware's I, games. And, and I think you may have liked it. I think you might have liked it as <laughs> well. I might have also put it in the same spot, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Did you? Is that your number one? Uh, yeah, that would be honest. I think our, our 1 and 2 is actually the exact same. All right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and it's, it's mainly probably because of the cast of characters. Yeah, the cast of characters as well. Because I've played other... i played Dragon Age Inquisition, and I found that even that cast of characters just wasn't as good as Mass Effect 2, even Mass Effect 3's cast of characters. No, no way. While they were just continuations of the previous games, still just weren't as good. There's not as many. No, there wasn't so as many. So I suppose if anyone hasn't played it, we won't, we'll try not to go into spoilers. It's an old game. There might be some spoilers, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, you should have played it. Um, if, if you're into, like, RPGs, it's one of the best um, in terms of you, you get to create your character. The, there is some freedom taken away from you in the fact that the character is Commander Shepard. Um, yeah. And that is how people refer to the character. And the character does have voice acting. But... That's one of the things I liked about it was because there's other RPGs you play and you, you pick your dialogue, but there's no speaking happening. And I suppose it's, you're supposed to kind of uh, think it's your own voice maybe, but in this, there's actual dialogue exchanges between the character you made and the characters you're talking to. And it just makes it f- like fit into the game world more. Like, you know, yeah, there's of, no disjointing like this. It makes it more kind of like a movie, I suppose, that the characters have yeah. a voice, but then you are then also the main character. You're like class and picking the script. Um, yeah, exactly. And then, so you create your commander shepherd. You choose all the dialogue. Um, you can decide to be kind of a hero character or an anti-hero character, depending on your dialogue choices. It affects the way the story plays out. But um, the real draw to it is, you essentially have to uh, form your Avengers. It's like assembling the Avengers. You have to go out. Uh, you have these dossiers for what are the greatest soldiers in the universe, essentially. Assassins, mercenaries. Yeah, they're all like anti-heroes as well. So it's like the yeah. anti-Avengers. Yeah, it almost. is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so you have to assemble them for what is called the suicide mission. And then you have to go on this suicide mission. And depending on the choices you make throughout the game, at the end of the game, everyone can die. Everyone can live. Yeah. Or some people can die. Yeah. The first time I played it, I had no idea that that was the impact it was going to have. I yeah. got out of there, like, I had, t- like, what was it, 11 uh, teammates? 10? 
It's it, it's an even. It's always an even number. So right. it's you and it's then ten, 10 other people. The DLCs. Yeah. I uh, got out of there with four survivors, including my character. Uh, like nearly everyone. That, yeah, died. that's the same with me. Yeah, and it was four people. Awesome, because I was sad when they died because you build up a really good relationship with each of the characters, and they all have their own kind of backstories and their own little side missions. And so, if you're, I think if you're into like character-driven games, and also lots of freedom and choice, um, as well the Gameplay is good. Like the oh, they good. they revamped the gameplay compared to the first Mass Effect. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, just a massive improvement. It's a lot easier to jump into it, but there is points where it feels kind of repetitive. There's a lot of the gunfighting that feels. Yeah, this is just to say, like, as if you're into character-driven games, because, like I said at the beginning, like that's what I'm all about. But yeah, that is a game that I just could not get into. Yeah, you did try it, at didn't you? All I played the whole thing. Played you played the, the whole, whole thing? I played the whole game. You've cleared it. I am so surprised. I didn't know you played the whole thing. Because I, I was like, oh, he'd love it if he played the whole thing. <laughs> no, I didn't. I, I can't tell you, thing. you tried to start of it and went, nah. And anymore. there's a lot of uh, characters. I'd say the best story in it is, is stuff you can miss. Yeah, I suppose. Like, like the, the main th- plot is not as good as some of those side oh, stories man. you can get, right? The, the main plot's great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's just by the end, the, I, I just did had zero attachment to anyone. So it, when I was losing people, like it just wasn't happening for me. Oh. It just didn't play it right. Yeah, no, you, you, you just got to go back and play it. You played it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I suppose, I mean, look, that's the difference in taste, I guess. Like I... Like for me, when I played it, I was on a. I it was my first year of college actually. I kind of played it late, but I was in. I was. It was my first year of college, and I was on my Christmas break, and I had an extra week that I'd never had before. I was like, "Holy shit!" Everyone else is in work school. or school, and I'm off. I was like, "What'll I do?" And for the whole week, I just played that game. And I was like, oh, "I'll give this a go." And then I got like lost into it, and I was doing everything, and I was having dialogue exchanges with everyone. I was nearly more interested in when being on the ship, going and talking to my teammates. Oh yeah, the the the, the fact that the crew is so diverse yeah, as well. Yeah. Like cool. you know, one of them is like a kind of a religious assassin, and then the Thane. other one's an absolute Thane's awesome maniac covered tattoos. Jack, she's and awesome. And then you too. got the operatic singing medic or engineer of him. Yeah, that's true too. Only, like, if you, only if you get that dialogue. You know? Only if you get that dialogue, but it's still, yeah. I think that's that's something that's great on the in-depth that they put into it, that yeah, you can miss, obviously if you miss it, yeah. you don't, you're not going to form an attachment, but then if you go that extra mile to talk to them, just how in-depth of a character and how much a voice cover that they did with the actors, which is great. Hmm. Yeah. Yep, it's great. It is great. Yeah. But I think it like, I don't think anyone would disagree of that being within the top no, no. games no, no, of no. Yeah, yeah. anyway. Yeah, no, um, I don't think so. Yeah, I've seen it on a few lists. I was surprised. I didn't realize how liked it is, though. Oh, yeah, people love the hell people out of it. People do, like, yeah. I mean, that's only... That's the, I think that's the main reason Tree got a little bit smacked. Was how good 2 was. Because yeah. people love 2 so much that their expectations were almost ridiculous for Tree. Yeah, they were quite yeah. high. And then also, when you have... It's a common trend as well with something being loved is that you, it's very hard to actually end something that will satisfy everybody. That was another problem with Mass Effect 3. Oh, yeah. Was that people... Yeah, I, I don't know what people... Look, we might end up talking about 3 eventually when we get there, but might do. I don't know why people... Um, personally, I don't know why people got so upset about the ending. I think people thought that their choices all along the series were going to give them each an individual different ending. I was like, how is that possible? Like, well, it is possible. Only, yeah, but there's only going to be yeah, quant- quantum dream, does it? No, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll get, yeah. quantum dream. You yeah. know what? Great segue, Eric. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> because um, so, Mass Effect Two was also your number one. But number one, the heavy rain down underneath that, and I think heavy rain was second for all three of us. Uh, well, no, I, my I just did out a list. I wasn't. I was just basically wanting to see what the what you would say so i wouldn't right. end up saying it all right in your stead oh no uh because i have a i have a few things that i could classify as the favorite game of the year so i mine are not in any order no but i think on our list yeah it was well, the second one that we all have in common yeah heavy rain is on all of them definitely yeah. um yeah from yeah number two for me as well because i but it could have been number one it only like there's yeah. like a small margin yeah between them 
Um, so what was it about Heavy Rain? That I, well, I suppose it was, again, the character development. It was the choices. It's the fact that, isn't there like 20-something, 20 26 endings or something? Or 30? I didn't realize there was oh, that there's many. There's not that many, but there is a lot. There's a good there's few. A yeah, lot. There's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. The smallest decision can like have a completely different ending. Yeah, which is that's true. Yeah, just yeah. amazing. Really, I love how colorful that game starts. Oh, I don't even say how colorful no, just the game I, is. No, it's no, like it's a very it, bleak yeah, game. That's I what I love mean. All of <laughs> I love how colorful that game starts and how bright and uh, nice the start is, and like you kind of like. What am I really playing family for this game? And then, as soon as uh, spoiler alert, <laughs> well, as, as soon as the, as the soon start as his ends, kid dies. Oh, we're really straight. Yeah, yeah no, okay, I, fair yeah, I mean, it's an old game, it's the start of the game, it's the, start it's the, the setup to the game. Okay, as soon as his kid dies, you just have this dramatic intro with the saddest music I've ever heard in a video game. I think, personally, I think that is the saddest piece of music I and I mean that in a good way I don't mean like that's sad like it's really emotional yeah. with just rain dripping and for the rest of the game just grey rain bleak it's a noir drama it's um, it's so dark I love it yeah mm. I love it what do you like about Heavy Rain? well I, everything that was just been said but uh what I remember, because I remember seeing it, and then it was like, I, this is not for me. It's not. Oh, I know, yeah. I, I, there's I, a hype I, about it. I didn't get it. I, it's like I, I don't even classify this as a game, and I think a lot of people were like that, um, which was so naive of me. Like, because mm. it, it went on to spawn some of the uh, most, I suppose, popular t- type of games, like Telltale. Would Telltale be as successful as they oh, are yeah, if it yeah, wasn't for the true. success yeah. of Heavy it kinda Rain? Kind of kicked off that whole probably not choice based game thing. And I think Heavy Rain, um, I don't, like, the Telltale games, although fun, will never reach the the heights that Heavy Rain did. Because you don't have as much choices in those type of games as you do no. in Heavy Rain. And Heavy Rain is actually my second platinum, the second game to platinum. Like, that's how much I really love that game. It's like, I'm yeah, going yeah. to get everything in this game. And every ending it's not like a lot of the choice based games are going to be it's a new ending like it's the same scene just a different character yeah yeah whereas heavy rain gives you entirely different scenes like, oh yeah yeah like some of them are like okay yeah that is the same scene just a different character but there are brand new cutscenes. uh some of them are nice and some of them are horrific yeah yeah, yeah. And they're glorious yeah, it can end really bleak or it can end really optimistic but as you say with the soundtrack, like that's something that you can just throw on and actually listen to. Like it's actually a great piece. The of soundtrack is amazing. It's, a, it's game. a really great composition. Yeah. The thing is with the game because it has been remastered for PS4, um, doesn't totally hold up because I've gone back to play it. Oh yeah, it's it's a little clunky because I I went to replay. Not just PS4 that; as well. it's to do with the the voice acting isn't up to the standard that we have now. No. Yeah. So you kind of have to, if you're going to play, you have to kind of put yourself back um, to the to 2010, I suppose. But if you can play the PS1 version of Resident Evil, don't worry. Like th- this game is like Oscar worthy in comparison. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, it's like, I mean, there are a, a couple of performances in it that are really, really good. But oh yeah, yeah. Uh, not a, like it's supposed to be set in in the US, and not every, all, not all the actors are are from the US. Most of them are European. So them trying to put on an American accent is very telling. Mm. Um, the, I think the thing that really drew my attention to it was I, I remember playing a small snippet of at a friend's house and it was one of the trials you have to do. And yeah. the trials are very, like, uh, like not, not as bad as Saw, but like Saw-esque. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. And when you see Saw-esque. you as, as the player, you have to force your guy. So it plays on that idea of uh, progression, right? Like... Or or even the whole do not walk into that room. You know, like when you're watching a horror film, it's like, well, Egypt, why did you do that? Like, it's so yeah. obvious that there's going to be a thing behind the door. It's going to get him. But as a player, you know that in order to progress, you have to go forward. Uh, you're not going to get to the end as a player. And that's, that. I think as a video gamer, that that's uh, that's scary. 
Yeah. You want is. to complete the game. Yeah. As a completionist. Yeah. So well, it forces you to have to push this character through horrible stuff. And uh, you slowly press on the thumbstick or you have to press an R2 or whatever like that. And I think that they managed to blend the connection of the player to the controller to the actions that are happening on the screen. Mm -hmm. Something that I don't think Telltale have ever done. Telltale have pretty much just been, all right, here's the scene. Press play for the next scene. And that's, doesn't like Telltale. I don't like Telltale. <laughs> I think they're very overrated. There was a, I think there was a Telltale sign there. <laughs> very overrated. But it is that. It's like, here's the scene. Yeah. Uh, press A button to play the next scene. But right, there's yeah. no slow, like, kind of the the drive to... to yeah, kind of like the bit in, in Heavy Rain where there's one bit you're crawling through like a dark tunnel and there's glass everywhere and yeah. you have to press like R1 and that's your right arm and L1 is your left arm and every button you do is an action climbing through you have this to do glass. It slowly yeah yeah one of the things I love about Heavy Rain apart from everything <laughs> is because uh, <laughs> I mean even the it's, title it's all good even <laughs> it's great even the title Heavy Rain is one of the best game titles I think out there like, I love yeah. that title because it doesn't give anything away. But when you play it, it's the perfect title. Like, yeah. it's so fitting to the the world and the style of it. Um, but you can't get a game over. If you yeah. fail, you got to live with it. And you just got to keep playing. And I love that because i got to be honest, not a fan of game overs. I hate getting them. I hate retrying something that's pissing me off. That's because it so ruins that. So, uh, movie yeah. experience that you had as a kid it like, charges you it yeah. takes you out of it you yeah. kind of go well okay now it's a game because now I'm going back to a checkpoint now it's kind yeah. of a it's arcadey yeah it kills yeah. the vibe of it so I love yeah. I personally I love games that I mean obviously most games do have a game over it doesn't make me go I hate all those games <laughs> like, but I do love games where you, it just keeps playing like and there is a punishment, but it might be story related or it might be like uh, Heavy Rain is kind of like an over 18s Lego game. <laughs> <laughs> like in you know other Lego games, you can't get a game over, but it does punish you. It takes your money off you. Yeah. Or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like if you die, you lose. You're like, oh shit! Now I won't get you know Super yeah, Jedi that yeah. I was trying to get or something. <laughs> yeah, but it's kind of like that. Like you just you can keep playing. It's yeah. fun that way. It doesn't break up your momentum. It just kind of you got to live with the choices. The, the biggest punishment though is that, like, for Heavy Rain or Quantic Dream games, is that if a character dies, that's half of the game gone. Well, there is that. Yeah, yeah, you do lose. Yeah, yeah, you lose new portions. I suppose if, yeah. if you lose a character, it means that any other story beats that were going to happen later on, like you, they're gone. You don't. Yeah, them. but it is interesting that like, so then the challenge isn't the 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 game over and having to repeat it and beat this hard boss. The no. challenge is making sure you make the right decisions and you yeah. go through them correctly. And then when you do lose someone, in other games you're like wanting to redo it, maybe play it on a harder difficulty to get like new new unlockables or yeah. better score on the leaderboard. But in that, it's because you want to see what, what that character has gone through that you, yeah. you didn't get a chance to do it. Yeah. Part of me, I, I kind of struggle a little bit with replaying choice based games like I like to play them and see how else they turn out and I, I love choice based games they're going to come up a lot but part of me likes the the notion that you got to live with it do you know what I mean you got to live yeah. with the experience you had with it the first time you didn't know what was going to happen when you made the choice you made the choice and maybe you regret it but you go if this was like a TV show this is so gripping like if you so if someone dies <clears throat> yeah you're like I didn't want that them to die that depends on the game though but it does depend on the game and like don't get me wrong I've replayed every <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> some choice based, some choice based out, games, but... when you lose someone, yeah, it was so not gratifying. Like, it, like when you do when you lose someone in Heavy Rain, the outcome is so entertaining. Yeah, yeah. even if it was horrific, it's still entertaining, and the story continues to be entertaining. And I think games that came after, even Quantic Dream games, games that came after Heavy Rain, don't have that same. They're not as well written and. When when they lose an essential character, yeah. Well, one of the, like, I think another thing that Heavy Rain does really well. This might as well just be episode uh, heavy, one. Heavy Rain. Are you heavy sure, Master Rain. Two is <laughs> no, 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 that's what I said. I like I meant it when I said they're really close. Like at one point, at one point, I put Heavy Rain over it. But I recently replayed Mass Effect Two, and like in the last year, I also replayed Heavy Rain, 
and then the replay is where I kind of sw- switched the, where I was like, you know what, I really enjoyed Mass Effect 2 again, there's a lot more to do. Mm-hmm. So I suppose in terms of uh, escapism and having like, just getting yourself lost in a world for a long time, that's where I think Mass Effect 2 has the edge. But like I said, they're really close for me, like Heavy Rain is like epic, but um You've thrown me off now. You, <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. Sorry. I, I can't remember what my point was. <laughs> oh, that's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I remember when... Do you remember that Netflix show that came out? It was an episode the of... Bandersnatch. Um, that one? Bandersnatch. That's the one. <laughs> Do you not remember that? And it was, it was like... It was a Black Mirror thing, right? Yeah. It's, Where it I, was, never, I never did it myself. I did but, it. Yeah. It's a Netflix thing. And then you get to choose... So you make the choices, right? And people were going crazy about it. They were like, oh my God, this is amazing, right? right. But anyone who'd played a choice-based game before was like, this is kind of nothing new. It's just done with live actors rather than... So it's oh, like, yeah. like a game on Netflix, essentially. Yeah, yeah but there's um, also... That's already existed before Bandersnatch. I know that. But my issue with it was, and it's the thing that Heavy Rain does well, is there was no plot to Bandersnatch. It has multiple endings that any one of them could be true and they're so different to each other. So in like one of the endings is that he realizes he's in a game and he's being controlled or something like that. Another ending has something to do with like some demon stuff going on. Another ending is just that he's just crazy. But none of them are the ending. Whereas if you play Heavy Rain and I'm not going to spoil it, no matter what way you play it, like the game can happen differently. Yeah. But the twist stays the same. Yes. And the twist is really the good. Is the same, yeah. And it's there and it's inherent in the plot. And so it's not a case of, well, when I played it, this was the this yeah. was the twist. And when yeah. I played it, this was like the twist stays the same and it's the right twist. And it works. Yeah. Yeah. But also like uh, consider you're saying Bandersnatch and has so many different endings that are completely essentially completely different genres. Oh, and it well, just, it, yeah, it makes it disregard, like, there's no point well, in the end. Well, with Heavy well. Rain, all of its endings are still within the noir genre. Yeah, yeah, well, you might, the world. You yeah, might get a happy one, you might yeah. get an absolutely depressing one. I think or the only annoyance with Heavy Rain in games like that is, like, when you go to, to talk to someone who's also played it. And you're going to have two different conversations, most likely. <laughs> oh, yeah. And... Your experience, their, your first experience, I think, is always going to be how you <laughs> want someone else to have experienced it so you can talk about it. Yeah, I But then they <laughs> play it one way and then it's like, what are you talking about? Yeah, you can't go, man, do you remember the bit when this happened and I did this? <laughs> it's like, well, that's not what I did. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I suppose you're in a different yeah. room. Yeah. And then by doing that, you kind of go, oh, there's, that's really cool. But you just ruined that on me now. <laughs> yeah, it's like, thanks, man. I suppose, yeah, it's kind of one of those games that you can't, um, you can't really talk about until people have, like, really played, yeah. really played it and well, played a lot of it. I suppose you can talk about the loose, like, the twist you can talk about because everyone's going to get that. Like, yeah. I'm not, saying, I'm the, not the, saying let's do it. I'm no, sorry. No, but yeah, the, the key moments that are always the same. The key like, moments that are the same people can discuss and go, oh, jeez, I didn't see that yeah, coming, yeah, whatever like yeah. that. But I suppose people can compare what they did with each other. Like, so when they get to the Ooh. trials... What they did. What did you do with each other? When they get to the trials, you can go. Well, what did you do for that trial? Because some people might go, I didn't even yeah. do it. I I just yeah. backed out because you don't have. To. I think one That's of, the other well, thing. I think one of them I didn't do. One of them I failed, and I was trying to do it, but then it went. You can't do this. And just, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> like I was trying to do it. I, I don't know what. It, and it was actually. I remember you mentioned about the glass. It was the glass oh, one. Would you need some help? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got, I got to there, fast, really. and I I think I was going through too fast every time. And it kept fucking up the timing of it. Yeah. And he just went, I can't do this. And just left. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? I don't get a clue. <laughs> so every other one I did successfully. I think, but because of that one, I was missing a clue. I think I think I did all of them except the last one. I the did last one threw me off. all of them and got all the characters to the end. It was great. Such a great experience. That's not the heavy that rain experience. Like, and they had a happy time and the bottom ice cream. I'm not too sure if they did. Mine was pretty lit. <laughs> heavy I, dreams. I, <laughs> the the dad for me uh, got enough clues to figure it out essentially because he got the he, he he missing the last letter. Yes. And I ended up going to the wrong address. Really? Yeah. Is there so, two addresses that are really there's, similar? There's like three, three or something. There's three don't. that are very similar. You do need to go kind of, you oh, either need to that. 
guess correctly or get all the characters essentially. Right. And I ended up kind of I ended up going to the wrong address. Wow. Even though he's after doing all these trials and missing one character essentially. That's horrific. And it was beautiful. <laughs> it was beautiful. That's it's 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 also one of those things with choice based games where if you make the wrong choice, you almost love it more. You kind of do, yeah. You kind of like, as, oh, as I said, it depends. So it depends. Like some of them, uh, I've made a, a like. I can't remember which game it was actually. I think it could have been a Telltale one actually, and I think that's probably my distaste of Telltale <laughs> games. Is I think it happened a few times. Where if I, you're listening and you work for Telltale, <laughs> well, you they're not. They're, 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 <laughs> they're, yeah, they're, they're disbanded, aren't they? <laughs> oh, are they yeah, actually? Yeah, they're gone, gone. Yeah, I think I, like, I heard it, but I didn't think it was really happening because they just didn't they still release. They went bankrupt. They were trying. Totally, they totally. were trying to do. That's crazy. The it? Wolf Among Us too. Yeah, I thought I, that's still coming. Yeah, but under a different uh, different company, and I think uh, I think the original crew got bought up by by other companies. But, oh, um, it's a, yeah, it's essentially a different company that bought out most of it, and they're releasing the Wolf Among Us two. Uh, so the Wolf Among Us two is still coming. That's still coming. That's Thank okay. Yeah, because God. I think it was they uh, had to finish. They went bankrupt before the release of the final Walking Dead, the, wasn't it? Yeah, and then they had to finish it, even though they were like. Getting no money. <laughs> Imagine that. It's, like, it's like keep working, boys. <laughs> uh, okay, sir. <laughs> Should we really try our best? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> it's like yeah. I mean, we know we're all out of a job after this. So, but it's mad because they're such, just... they were such popular games. <laughs> yeah, they were huge. Yeah. They were massive. I, but um, and I do play them quite a lot of them actually, but. I don't like to play them. I, there's only one of them that I tried episodically. I actually prefer to buy the whole thing, like when they release oh, it as a physical game, it. and play the whole thing. It because is long though. I yeah no I don't play in one go like but I just I don't like that you gotta wait like a month sometimes two months for the next episode. You're kind of like they go bankrupt and you get nothing. Yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> no but like it, it takes you out of it because in that time of waiting you start another game. And when it does come out, yeah, you, you kind, kind of, of like, forgot about it, or you yeah, you kind of like, well, I'll get to it eventually, Do you know, because I'm playing this game now. Whereas at least if you actually have it, you go mm. maybe each night in a week you yeah. can play. I, have, episode, I, so. I could go on forever to rant about Telltale, so maybe we can <laughs> say that for another time. <laughs> It'll come up, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and top game next year is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, so. Actually, it kind of sounds like Heavy Rain was like the favorite. In the room. I don't know. Well, <laughs> well Adam, I think it was just Rain is we're all in unison that we all love it, so we're yeah. able to talk about it. Well, Adam, what was your game of 2010? Mm. And is it just Heavy Rain? And should we just end this conversation now? <laughs> I know. I, I think we'd be absolutely crazy not to mention Red Dead Redemption. I kind of thought it was coming out. Right <laughs> yeah, I kind of figured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, like yeah that game is what else you need to say about it I suppose yeah it's like yeah. GTA with cowboys I mean even the the success of I Red prefer to Dead GTA to, I prefer to GTA I um, prefer to GTA but I think what makes <laughs> well, <laughs> you just said again and I, 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 I like I haven't played it all that much but I just think it's a far more like I mean if video games are escapism yeah going into a cowboy era period and being but an I think that's what we're more missing like I mean I, I think for, like we we haven't really got any spaghetti western movies in a long time. In a long time, and it I think was a that, long time since we had. A and I don't western. think we can either. I, don't, I think no. if they try to release one now, it's not going to work because I think it's a product of its time. Yeah, yeah. it is. I yeah. think the closest thing we've gotten to a spaghetti western film is probably that one scene in uh, the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. All right, that's probably the closest we're ever going to get to a. I haven't, seen the movie yet. I haven't seen it, but he does play a cowboy. Yeah, yeah the they pretty much do, plays a cowboy. They do yeah, a spaghetti western. They, they're playing, okay. yeah, and they're they're kind of it's it's of that time as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, the thing is with the spaghetti westerns is that they again they're they're made by an Italian, generally filmed in Spain, but they have U.S. actors. That's generally what they that's their style. Um, and this game just captures that beautifully. Like uh, John Marston is essentially he's just Clint Eastwood. Really, yeah, like, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's it's amazing that they were able to just kind of shift. Like they they took what's 
good in GTA and brought it over into into Red Dead, but they kind of left behind what was uh, essentially not going to work. So they, the GTA Four, I think, was out before that. Was yes. That, yeah. Yeah. And there, you can't. You, if you looked at those two, there's some similarities, but I would say Red Dead has more similarities with San Andreas that came before it in terms of how the game, which is the best GTA, which is the best GTA. I don't care if I City fans <laughs> come at me, bro. Just how the game kind of <laughs> plays out and stuff, and yeah. the physics of it is it's a lot closer to San Andreas than it is with GTA Four. GTA Four just felt really, uh, I don't know, the physics engine was just. Off really weird. Board. It was really crazy. Um but the yeah, it's just so I think the the style, the gameplay, um and also it being a and I don't think this game would work if it was released today because it was a Unless it was a sequel. <laughs> unless it was a sequel. But the sequel like yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it lost a lot of the, the what made Red Dead special, I think. Yeah, there's a certain charm, I think, in and the it's first the time. fact that it's a uh it's a criticism on today's society. Yeah, uh, like so, it it does like it's a it's a mockery. Like it deals with racism, it deals with uh, sexism, all that. Yeah. Um, in the context that you, you know, every character around you thinks that's fine. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like it's totally fine to. They're be, all nasty, nasty yeah, they're, people. They're yeah. horrible people. But the what they're saying sounds so bloody ridiculous yeah that yeah. you have to laugh at it it's comical and nonsensical yeah. and that's what makes it really special it's that it's not shy to deal with those things and make it look ridiculous yeah so that when you in your, in your own world you're like kind of going but that's you know that wouldn't fly today obviously no it's yeah, ridiculous yeah. it's <laughs> kind of like the grand theft auto radio stations yeah, but as a question, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like all the conversations that happen on those or <laughs> those kind of making fun of those kind of um, that right, kind of society, yeah. like you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. And um, I think that uh, I might be saying it wrong because I didn't play all of Red Dead. Sorry, and I it's, it's a long so ass game. It's it a long ass game. Ass game. Um, but is it Dead Aim? It's called. Uh, no. What's it called? The, no, the you know the when you pick or oh, wait, oh yeah, that's called dead aim. That is called dead aim. Yeah, yeah, called yeah. Dead aim. No, I'll get to the other thing in a second. But uh, yeah, dead aim. Like that is a really cool. F- like I don't think any other game does a better marking system. No, than that. Like I think uh, the dead aim system is is awesome. It was always like let me earn this cool moment, then let me do the cool moment. Then let me be, be cool. A, yeah, I'd be an absolute like, gunslinger. Gunslinger, and, yeah, yeah. And, and also yeah. allow to be able to, to fire the amount of bullets that I have in my gun, rather than only like three times. Fun fact, and I learned this on QI actually, right? Right. Um, on, so there's one gunslinger way in bullet. which, yeah, yeah, in yeah. Which is one way in which Red Dead, I suppose, is not, not time, incorrect. Uh, accurate. Um, gunslingers kept five bullets in their six shooter and kept one empty. Yeah. To use that as the safety. Yeah, I'm wondering though so if there's something to do with the timing though. Like, don't get me wrong. Just if because I, of Red if, Dead no, is based... If, I, if I'm playing a cowboy yeah. game, I don't want it to be totally fucking accurate. Like, <laughs> well, <laughs> like, no, yeah, yeah. But so, like, we are want, want saying, the six fun fact, That's the nice thing about Red Dead as well, is that it's it's coming up to a point where they're, it, it's coming up to modernity. Like, it's, it's, mm. it's, a, it's a modern US... But people are trying to hold on to the old ways, yeah, and be outlaws and all that kind of stuff, and they're being drawn out. The tra- like, yeah, transportation's coming in, um, and autom- automatic weapons are coming in as well. Thematically, it's kind of like, do you remember um, Pirates of the Caribbean two when? Oh, like just oh less yeah, like less. all the colonials come yeah, over. Yeah. So, yeah, there's less and less pirates in the world, and the pirate way of living is kind of like yeah. It so definitely romanticizes. Yeah, the kind of like the, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like wasn't it great being a criminal and murdering and stealing and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's yeah, it's kind of like that. But thematically, the games are kind of like that in that the, the world is changing and there's kind of no place for bandits or gunrunners yeah. anymore. So I guess that's why they had to for the second one go back in time, be a prequel because. Like yeah, how f- can you yeah, because a cowboy Red, if you go further, like yeah, Red Dead Redemption is is all about you know the, moving past being an outlaw, yeah, yeah going yeah. into the modern era. 
Uh, and I, that's the great thing about that story is because it is a sequel to Red Dead Revolver, essentially. Isn't it, it? it is, isn't it? Uh, is it? Isn't it? Is so. John Marston not? Like, I don't think he's no, in it. I he's not played, in it. No. I thought he was. I never played I know, Red Dead Revolver, but I, I thought he was the character in that as well. So I know the guy on the cover to Red Dead Revolver, which is the guy you play as, I do believe. Is Clint Eastwood. Is Clint Eastwood. But he does have the same <laughs> scars yeah, yeah. as John Marston. I don't but, think it's the same character. No, because you kind of we, start of Red Dead 2, to look that up. you get to see how John Marston gets those scars. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Fair yeah. enough. No, it's not the same. It's not, it's definitely not the Jesus. same character. I thought it was. It's it's a Very but surprised. it is essentially the same universe. It's a sequel essentially. But you're you would have played the type of character John Marston would have been in Red Dead Revolver. Mm. I think at this point, Red Dead Redemption is kind of a soft reboot or a well, yeah, hardcore yeah. reboot. <laughs> Like, I think at this point, people just regard those two, the two Redemption games and probably forget yeah, about well, Red no Dead one, Yeah, no one like, really counts Red was it, Dead It was Revolver. a PS2 game? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I thought you played it. No, oh, I played no. Gun. You played Gun. Ah, oh, Gun was class. There will be a whole episode dedicated to talking uh, about Gun, Gun, which is where we just ask Eric, how was it? <laughs> oh, it's amazing. I saw some of it. Uh, uh, you saw it. some of it. Is it a better cowboy game than Red Dead Redemption? <laughs> I'll have to go back and play it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's definitely Probably not hard, better. No, it's definitely not better received than. Uh, well, the, it I'd did say, have cool boss fights. It, it did have cool, and I like the fact that when you did boss <laughs> fights, yeah, we're on this now. We're on gun. Uh, the fact that <laughs> it did not come out in 2010. Could, it did not. Uh, <laughs> I'll just say one thing, right. and then we will go back to Red Dead. Yeah, yeah. Um, when you kill the bosses, you you got like special weapons, which I thought was really nice. You got rewards, you got for gear. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. That is cool. Red Dead Redemption, one thing it did, I think, one thing it kind of revolutionized was DLC content. Because Red Dead's DLC, which became a separate game, yeah, like yeah. they went, let's make a DLC, but the DLC is actually I, just a whole game. an entire game. Yeah. And I think to this day, and I'm sure Witcher 3 fans will probably fight me on this, <laughs> I think Undead Nightmare is the best DLC ever made. I'll fight you on that. I, I knew that. that. I knew people said that. Um, why I say that is not necessarily that, the, that it has never been bettered, more so for its innovation in that I t- like I, because they made that, it paved the way for DLCs as big as it. I don't think there'd been a bigger DLC than that before it happened. No, I don't. Uh, yeah, because it is... Like it is, it is a full game. It's a full game, but it was released first as a DLC, and then they started selling it separately because of how many people were getting Red Dead just to play that. Yeah, and that they added in other. Wasn't it, like you downloaded it first. It wasn't a physical copy first. I don't know, actually. I no, I think it, no, it, was... it released simultaneously. Because I thought they just as released a DLC it around Halloween time. Uh, as... They did, but it's the disc shocker, for... shocker. I what? bought, <laughs> I bought Undead Nightmare. Before Red Dead Redemption. Same. Yeah. I think a lot of people... Like, I, I'm going to put it out there. I think Undead Nightmare is better. I do, yeah, than I do Red Dead Redemption. Think. Because, well, for me, like it has all the gameplay of Red Dead Redemption. But then it's also got... Zombies. zombies. <laughs> <laughs> like it, Cowboys versus zombies. Who doesn't want to fucking do that? Like, <laughs> and you can lasso yeah. zombies. And they had the tone perfect for it. It was like... Yeah, the, it was like a black comedy. Yeah, very yeah. much so. Like that was the, it was awesome. Yeah. And, then, and then they had, I know they had other mythical monsters as well. Like, like so they, they you could ride the horses of the apocalypse. You like, could yeah. ride the horses of the apocalypse. Like they took a DLC concept, which is what if we did a DLC where there's zombies, zombies just around. But then they must have had a development team that were like keep that just kept adding to it. it was like, and what if there were Sasquatches? And what if there was a troop? I, that, that's and what I, if there I really was... love that because I remember yeah. it, like when we played San Andreas, and there was always that like because you know you didn't really, there wasn't really internet right, and people are just like passing yeah words. cheat codes were yeah, written on your copy yeah, page yeah. that was and people are just like. You know, saying things like when you're playing Tomb Raider, everyone's like, "Oh yeah, type in this code," and she turns naked and all that kind of stuff, right? That was the type of real. that's the type of discussion that was happening in schools. Yeah. And one of the things was that if you go into CJ's mom's house and into the sitting room, look on the wall, and there's a real blurry picture of a forest, and you can barely make out kind of it's there's nothing there. It's really just a blur. But people were saying <laughs> that 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 there, that blur right there, that's the Sasquatch. And everyone, they spent, That's like, there's even YouTube channels dedicated to hunting the Sasquatch in GTA San Andreas. 
There is none, but, yeah, but I'm sure people have modded it. But they but, are in Undead Nightmare, folks. You can actually find but them. But you can hunt it in Undead Nightmare. Yeah, you can. I, it does, I like that. They that also gives you one of the hardest choices, I think. Oh, is it Sasquatch? Like, uh, it's got like a family and shit. Even though you yeah, you really wipe is. out his family, <laughs> the one you talk to is the last Sasquatch left, and you have to decide whether you're like, gonna... "Thanks, bro." Yeah, he, yeah. No, it's, I forgot that actually. Yeah, it's yeah, it is. it's that is a hard choice to make, like, because it's like, Wait, oh, what's the, cho- oh, what's the choice? The choice is so you kill his family, and he comes up to you, and is he like? Kill me too, or is he like leave me alone? He doesn't because I don't think that's a hard choice. He I'd leave him alone if he wanted to be left alone. No, but no, he doesn't give you the choice. He's just explaining to you that Sasquatches don't take and eat children; that they just eat berries and stuff like that. Oh right, because everyone else is telling you. Obviously, all the it's myths, all and, myths and legends yeah. will be Sasquatches are violent yes. creatures. Oh yeah, he's really friendly, isn't he? Yeah, well, he's annoyed with you because you blew. No, his... but he's <laughs> <laughs> you went around. I went around with an explosive yeah. rifle yeah. and blew them all up. He... Wow. <laughs> Yeah, they were all a mush. He was uncharacteristically pissed like you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, this is giving me second thoughts of the Wampa from Star Wars. Huh? Oh, right, when... when oh, when Luke yeah, kills him, yeah, like, maybe, cuts off his maybe he, was, he was like, dude, I was just hanging you upside down. <laughs> <laughs> I just... You know, like, my, this fa- is, this my family used to live here and you just built your base on top of it, slaughtered yeah, my family. And I just wanted to bring you here and ask you why. I came to give you a hug, <laughs> I came to give you a hug and you cut my arm off. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know, uh, off topic, Mark Hamill, that's the one scene I think he most disagrees with in Star Wars. He doesn't like that Luke cuts off the Wampa's arm because he's like a big believer in like because I remember like, there's some interview about it where he's talking about um, wait is this Wampa like an animal I'm like yeah yeah oh I don't think a Jedi would cut off an animal's arm it's just trying to eat like these it's not evil you know it's not like an evil thing it's just it was like didn't he used to like, shoot Womp Rats with his t- <laughs> <laughs> 16 he had no problem delivering that line it's like yeah but they're rats man you know <laughs> so <laughs> That is a line, isn't it? That's not just a family yeah, no, yeah, joke. Because it's in episode four. They're <laughs> talking is, about yeah. the size like, of the dead yeah, stars. I used to shoot what, the, what was it? Wampa has with my T sixteen back at home, and they're not bigger than that. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, off topic that's, there. That's, that's, that's gas. <laughs> off topic. The name of the podcast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we can want them a lot. It could be. Um, but yes, yeah, Undead Nightmare, I think, is is better than the the actual game. Yeah, but you can't the, have the, uh, the Undead Nightmare without... Of course, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to credit where credit's due. Like, I just think that when they did the DLC, they made it an even better game. Like, <laughs> I think, I think, <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't usually happen. Usually a DLC is just a little extra added on Joke. mission. Well, um, or, you um, know, yeah, there are some Call exceptions Call of Duty to that. people who ended up buying Call of Duty just for zombies mode. That is true. You silly fools. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and buying sequels for the same thing, you FIFA fans. <laughs> uh, I wonder what a FIFA DLC is. But one thing I like about the ball. Undead Nightmare <laughs> is that it's not as long as the actual game. The, the, it's it's right. nice and concise. Yeah. If I was to criticize Red Dead Redemption, it is that it's way too long. Yeah. Way too long. Because there's actually there's a lot to do in it. If you want to spend more time in that world you know there's a lot to do in it you don't need to make the main story that long and uh you know that goes for any game you don't have to make the actual storyline go on for (laughs) hours of just fetch quests you know that could be side quests and there isn't really side quests in red dead but you can uh, apart from like the bounty hunter missions. So yeah, bad. things that are uh, more, you know, hunt for something to unlock this thingy or find a treasure map and all that kind of oh, stuff. Yeah. But it's not like you go to a person and they say, "Get me the, get me the, I don't know, I lost me wheelbarrow." <laughs> yeah, I, I, I hate fetch quests. It's so it's such a lazy. But way it's fine of doing when you've like... completed the game and you want something else to do. I know, but I just think fetch quests are really like really bad. Uh, I'll get to them later on. Like when there's certain games, and just <laughs> I fucking hate fetch quests. It's like I get it. You want me to explore the world you made? I already want to do that. That's why I bought an open world game, so I don't want to fucking look for frogs. Anyway, <laughs> we're just, we'll get to it later on. Um, but uh, I think as well, um, like Rockstar are the only their games are the only games that i play not for story 
which is weird because no, earlier yeah, on yeah. I was saying like the, like a game like I usually play for story and for characters and then the gameplay I hope complements it I have fun along the way but really I like it's one of those ones where I will just throw it on and the story mission is over there and it's like the last thing I'll do I'll do like everything except yeah this. it's just, it's I don't just think a I've, sandbox really. I actually I, I, I can openly say it I, don't, I have never completed a Rockstar game I have never seen the ending of any of them and I've played the shit out of San Andreas I've, I've played a lot of Red Dead like I have never seen how any of them end I have no idea <laughs> can someone tell me <laughs> what happens to John Mars well it's, it's been spoiled on me but, yeah uh, you know mm. what are you going to do but uh, <laughs> but I don't mind but yeah I, but also I will say that because um, I am aware of what happens at the end of Red Dead they very cl- I think they very cleverly came up with a way to give the game a finite ending but still giving you a way to uh, like complete more missions and continue playing the game after the fact. Yeah. Yes. I I thought that was a really clever way of dealing with that. Rather than just whole like... Um, you were looking at me like you have no idea what I'm talking about. No, 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 no. I you understand what you're talking about. definitely know what I'm talking about. Yeah, because sometimes <laughs> you have games where... The, the, yeah, the ending the is ending finite, happened, but then they go credit, like, right, oh, okay. now so you're if, back in time. Yeah, yeah. But you just so wanted to For example, it. right, like if you, like the Batman Arkham games are a good example where they will have an actual ending to their story. Mm-hmm. And then after credits, Batman's just back on the map. And it's like, now you can just do all that side stuff that yeah. realistically would have happened before the ending. Because the, whatever the ending would be to each of those games, realistically... Is the he end. would not be back there. Of course he would. No. Yeah, he would. No, he wouldn't. No, Arkham Knight is the only one that he wouldn't. <laughs> but Spoiler. <laughs> but uh, Asylum, I can absolutely see him going in and going and going, yeah, actually, I stopped the Joker, but there's actually some other There's stuff still I some should... load of fucking trophies I need to collect. <laughs> <laughs> there's a fuckload of Riddlers, man. stop this Riddler. Yeah. <laughs> like, he has other ways of finding... Like, because Riddler's actually in Gotham somewhere in that whole game. He has other ways of finding him rather than... I still gotta fucking find his character profiles. I am still, but it's just a fun thing to do. Like, yeah. but I'm well, just saying, game. Red Dead finds a really good way of launching you back into the open world to do whatever you want. Yep. Um, while staying true to the story. True to the story. Yeah. They do and that really a, well. it, the, I think that's why the game is really long as well. Um, is is for that story. Yeah. Um, because it's called Red Dead Redemption, so it this is. character needs to go from being an outlaw to being a redeemable person that you actually end up liking and what do yes. they do to people that you like they stop you from playing as them at the end of the game <laughs> 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 and they make you play as someone else so you yeah. didn't grow attached at all <laughs> yeah yeah it's a beautiful story it is but no, yeah i think that's story. why they they draw out that the length of it you're kind of doing like yeah. why am i doing all this really farming boring, stuff everyday stuff like why can't they go back out in the road and I don't know rob a train yeah but uh yeah it is called redemption at the end so it is yeah yeah so I th- I think that sums up our games yeah so of 2010 I think so Mass the top Effect 3 then were Mass Effect 2 Heavy, Heavy Rain, Rain and Red, Red Dead Redemption, Redemption even if we don't all agree <laughs> <laughs> ah we do oh we do really like yeah 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 I think I suppose the the only like I think if anyone saw that on the list, they wouldn't be surprised. I don't think Heavy Rain is rated as high on a lot of other people's lists as it would be on ours. Like because well, I've heard really other people because... talk about them, and I, I, it doesn't come up as much as like Mass Effect Two. I've heard come up a lot. I've heard Red Dead, obviously, mm-hmm. and I think probably was Game of the Year that year. I can't remember like I officially. Probably on a yeah yeah. yeah I would assume it was. Well, there's just, but, like just Heavy Rain doesn't years. get mentioned nearly as much. So if you haven't played Heavy Rain do yourself a favor and play Heavy Rain because it is awesome and then if you haven't played the other ones play them play too because they're, I'm pretty sure they're awesome too well Heavy Rain is remastered for PS4, PS4 so you yeah. can absolutely pick yeah. it up it's coming to PC um, and I believe Mass Effect 2 is available on Xbox Game Pass so you can play it um, backwards compatible yeah. You can it's backwards compatible, and I think Red Dead is as, as well. So they're all you're you're able to play all three of them on current gen anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. As long as you have one of those consoles, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully uh, two. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't, well, can I help you, son? Yeah, go, go buy one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, it could be on PS now, but I haven't checked. Yeah, 
It could be. I don't. I think it. Red Dead is. I'm okay. pretty sure Red Dead Redemption yeah, on is PS on now. PS yeah, now. Red Dead Redemption is, is on yeah. PS now. It's one yeah. of the first ones that they like, yeah. advertise on it. I think okay. So those are our uh, top games for 2010. Um, I we will have a Facebook page by the time this goes up. So if that's one of the ways in which you're listed to this, uh, you could probably join in in the comment section. We can get a discussion going if other people also like those games, or someone might have a different favorite game, so they might throw that up. Yeah. And do I be like, you're totally wrong, man. You Dude, it was Black <laughs> Ops. You forgot about Black Ops. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I liked Black Ops. Like I, I, I had it in my top three, but it's nowhere near as close as yeah. uh, the others. Yeah, you loved it for zombies, didn't you? No, that's not why. <laughs> Undead Nightmare does zombies better, guys. Sorry. Truth. Truth. Um, so in the next episode, because for the, for the first few episodes of this uh, podcast series, we are going to be just talking about the games of the last decade, and we're looking at each year for each episode. Um, and then after after that point, we'll move on to other topics um, and other games. Um, but for the next episode, we're going to look at the year 2011, um, which from my memory was a really, really good year for games. So mm-hmm. that'll be twice the length of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Every game will be. Um, but before we close off this episode, uh, just currently, what are people playing or what are people looking forward to playing or what's, what's, what's the game that everyone's on at the moment? So starting with you, Eric. <laughs> starting with me? Yeah. Uh, what over about to you. And over to you. Uh, play, what am I looking for? Uh, forward to uh, Death Stranding and Cyberpunk 2077. Very surprised. Actually, I'm not surprised. No. I'm not surprised That's pretty me. Like, Everyone seemed... Uh, well, I, I, won't, I won't get into it. The Cyberpunk one, right. I, I also am looking forward to it, but I don't understand why it's as hyped as much as it is. I, I've, I've never played the tabletop game, so maybe I have to play that to no, get no, why it's, it's so CD, exciting. It's, just it's because a CD, CD Project Red. I, I, okay, but like, it's, brand, it's all for the branding, man. Yeah, it's I mean, a Gucci. Like, I, I just, it's what like, I'm saying is, I haven't seen any footage that has made me, like, I've seen footage that's like, oh, that looks really cool, but I haven't seen any footage that's made me go, that no, it's, it's literally just because it's the best game ever. ever. Well, it's yeah, so another thing it also me. has... That's it, weird to me. It kind of has that heavy rain aspect of each mission you can do completely different, which will have different outcomes on the story. Oh, okay. So it does have that stuff. And then you're also making your character from the ground up. You choose your whole background story, like in the first Mass Effect. I suppose so, it's weird to me that it's first person. Yeah, I, that's my one flaw. That's one thing I don't like. That's the thing that's jarring on me. It reminds me of... Um, Deus Ex, mm-hmm. Human Revolution. I remember seeing the trailer for that and been really, really like excited for it. And then the gameplay did not match the cinematic visuals at all. It was like a weird. It was like this should. This feels like it should be third person. So I think with this one as well, when I saw the cinematic trailer, I was like, that, "This looks awesome." But when I saw gameplay, I was like, "That doesn't match." Yeah. For me, it doesn't match. And then why make your character if you can't see him? <laughs> I don't know, but <laughs> at least but that's just, at least yeah. you'll get to spend about what seventy two hours just looking at Keanu Reeves. Yeah, that's true. Well, Keanu Reeves being in it—that was a really cool review. Yeah, that's great. And uh, then you're gonna play Dead Stranding. Uh, yeah, I'll get Dead Stranding played. Obviously, I think we're all looking forward to Final Fantasy Seven. We'll get there eventually. We'll get there eventually. Though. We'll get there eventually. Uh, so the games I'm playing at the moment are I've gotten back onto Detroit, Witch Tree, and I'm also playing Sekiro as well. Where do you get the Why time don't you play those? a long game? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Because every game is too short to me. You're playing every fucking game. Like, like, yeah, and I'm also playing... What are you uh, playing? Uh, everything. <laughs> I'm looking forward to everything, and I'm playing everything. Uh, my schedule is pretty free. Life, life is good, Chris. Life it, is yeah, good. Life is good. <laughs> I've been treated pretty well right now. Uh, I'm playing Game of the Year every year. <laughs> That's right, Sekiro was Game of the Year. Sekiro was Game of the Year. Game of the Year, yeah. It's like... And Witcher was Game of the Year when that came out. So that was, like, yeah, that was. I'm just playing the Game of the Year from every year. I'm having a great time. <laughs> huge open world experiences. I'm playing them simultaneously on multiple screens. <laughs> okay, Adam. <laughs> are there any games you're playing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing all of them. This is going to sound really lame. <laughs> now we're after coming after that. I'm playing a Goat Simulator. Nice. Yeah. I saw it free on the... <laughs> it's free on PS on Plus. Plus. Plus at the moment, yeah. I haven't um, downloaded it yet. Should it I? It is definitely worth jumping into. I mean, it's free. You might as well. Is it as good as the Goose game, which I also haven't played, but everyone is obsessed with? Uh, it's not as adorable as the Goose game, but there's more... <laughs> oh, that's the Goose Do game. Oh, Mother Goose. <laughs> ah, the Go- yeah, the Goose game is good. The Goose game is good. Yeah. But the uh, Goat Simulator 
is chaotic. Like it's just I actually they they have um what's the name of the company that did it? Coffee Stain Studios, I think. That's a great name. And we should stay there <laughs> for our podcast. <laughs> we should be Coffee Stain Podcast. None of us drink coffee really, but I drink coffee. Yeah. But uh just their uh I suppose description of the game sums the game up. Okay. So I'm just going to try to bring it up here. But I'm also playing... Uh, well, I'm trying to get through it. It's actually a really freaking hard game. Uh, Ori and the Blind Forest. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's the game that I've came out. I've heard of it, but I've never... It's gorgeous. I've actually not seen it's footage, but I heard beautiful. great things about it. It's and beautiful. there's a sequel, I think, coming out this year, I think. Yeah. Ori and, and the... I can't remember. Death of the Wisp. Forest? <laughs> Wait till they get to Ori in the Mute Forest. Oh, here we go, right. Uh, <laughs> so go, go, <laughs> go dialogue. Goat Simulator. Yeah. Uh, it's the latest in Goat Simulation technology. Uh, goat <laughs> Simulator is all about causing as much destruction as you possibly can as a goat. Nice. It has been compared to an old school skating game, except instead of being a skater, you're a goat. <laughs> and instead of doing tricks, you wreck stuff. I, I, I do admit, it does feel like playing... The old school Tony Hawk's games. Right. Because you're just doing shit and getting points for it. And it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, Code Simulator is a completely stupid game. And to be honest, you should probably spend your money on something else. <laughs> such as a hula hoop, a pile of bricks, or maybe pool your money together with your friends and buy a real goat. <laughs> uh, so they know how to sell it. Yeah. And then they have <laughs> in their testimonials. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll treat you. <laughs> They have a Games Radar's uh, testimonial. Yeah. Uh, It says, If you want to waste your money on a broken game that barely inspired a smile from us, buy Goat Simulator. (laughs) (laughs) But, like, okay, so, like, uh, you know, like, they're saying negative things about it, but loads of people played it, and it was, like... This is coming directly from the creators. (laughs) <laughs> that, that is the creative. No, but like I'm just saying about IGN's uh, comment there. I think IGN. No, that's Games Radar. Uh, oh, Games Radar. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I think. Uh, but like IGN's, no, but like, IGN's is uh, Go Simulator isn't much of a game, but it's a hell of a good time. <laughs> <laughs> like I remember, like when it came out, like people were saying, "Oh, are you playing Go Simulator?" Like it was raved about. Um, I did play it very briefly, a PC version of it, yeah. uh, on my friends computer when we were staying over there uh and uh, yeah i did not i was like what the hell is this like what's, <laughs> what's the point and they were because uh, the lads were playing they're really into it and they were like it's just good crack like yeah it's good crack like you good, know you're good good like eric loves things that are just good crack good crack you know? no substance just good crack someone trying to sell that to me something was they go on rants saying how shit it is but it's good crack go spend 70 euro on it uh, I don't that's think go so simulator. that's go simulator <laughs> well we're free now if you're on PS Plus yeah. <laughs> so, what I can recommend so this episode sponsored to understand <laughs> to understand go simulator all you have to do is just go in and there's like in a, um, almost like tasks to do yeah and it's it's all about trying to figure out what the hell you have to do to complete that task nice like at one point uh, I came across a you're kind of going up a hill the graphics are horrendous the physics are horrendous yeah like no, everything it's like like yeah, it's it's all it's, physics isn't it yeah it's, it's gross all over the place and everyone in it is doing a weird dance like every model does the exact same dance yeah and uh, it kind of paved the way for Fortnite <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's like this area that you go up and it's like up past these trees because you don't really know where the boundaries are yeah and eventually you hit an invisible wall and it just flings you back in. It doesn't even kind of go, oh, no, you can't walk past here. It just fucks you back into the map. <laughs> <laughs> right? Nope. Yeah. And, you, like, you go up to these trees and all of a sudden the everything's going real dark and red and the music is getting kind of ominous and you go past these torches and next minute there's a giant, uh, like, pentacle on the ground with a... F- with a fucking demonic goat's head in the middle of it. I think you shared. I think yeah, yeah. I saw this. On but your if you story do certain somewhere. tasks, right, you unlock the devil goat. Nice. So there's new. There's different goats you can unlock, and there's another area where it's like this, uh, like a fighting ring, and all these people <laughs> are just like standing around this like b- ring that's full of like blood and stuff, and it's just like they're watching these goats kill each other. And if you go into that ring and beat the goat in the ring, you unlock the like this muscly goat. <laughs> please tell me it has like fists no no it's just like oh, a yeah. really it's, I think it's called ripped goat 
<laughs> it's like because he's so Fucking. ripped that the fur is like all like worn off him and stuff. Nice. But like each goat that you unlock has like a new ability. Yeah. Like, so there's like one which would have like z- like low gravity, so you can like jump really high and stuff. That's ri- that's ridiculous. This it's is, a ridiculous game. This sounds nuts. Yeah. When did it come out? I'm playing now. Uh. I. Because when we get to that year, you know, game of the year was. <laughs> uh, I don't think a, that would be the gold simulator. On that. I don't know what year it came out. I think um, twenty fourteen. I think. Oh, wait yeah. till you get to twenty fourteen, folks. But it's literally on everything, you know. Yeah. Like it's on your. Phone. Oh no! Yeah, you can play yeah, it on yeah. your phone. Play, yeah, yeah, it is very popular. Uh, but I've I've won one trophy left again to a platinum. Man. Jesus Christ! Yeah, I didn't realize you were playing that much. No, yeah, I'm playing a lot of it. Yeah, like, I fucking and love it this is, game. The trophy <laughs> is hell. Like, it's the worst fucking trophy. And I, I don't think I'm going to be able to platinum it. I think I think uh, like it was called Hell. No, it's called Flappy Goat. And you have to go, there's, <laughs> little, <laughs> there's an arcade machine in the game. Right. Where you go and play a game as this goat. Okay. And it's Flappy Bird, but instead of the bird, it's a goat. And you have to... Have you ever played Flappy Bird? I've played yeah, Flappy, yeah. Flappy Bird, yeah. It's hell. Yeah, it's, it's, it's did right. not get Flappy Bird. So, there, you it know... It wasn't as good as Temple Run. I put it that way. <laughs> no, it wasn't <laughs> <as good. laughs> You know what? You have to get past the barriers yeah. in it. And you, it, like, even the first one is hard to get past. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you have to get past 10 to get this trophy. Jesus. The most I got was four. Wow. I've played it for hours. <laughs> I haven't I slept. slept in days. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> this is the reason I was so fucked at Slipknot. That fucking goat. Yep. <laughs> well, I, I've, I've recently... Actually, last night I just finished uh, Mass Effect 2 again. That's why it was so kind of <coughs> fresh in my mind, I guess. I was replaying it from the, uh, the trilogy collection set. Um, How many people survived? So... I, I, you know what? It's not as impress. It's not as interesting a story when so many people survive. No. And I didn't. I wasn't trying to keep them alive because I couldn't remember. That's probably my problem. What you do? Um, <laughs> I the lost op- the one person I cared for. Oh, who's that? Um, Miranda. Yeah. I fucking hate Miranda. I, I don't hate, know why people. You can't I'm hate like, Von Strahovski. You know, actually, I'm hold like, on. I got to the end of the game, and Miranda was the only character who wasn't loyal to me. Because I just fucking hate her. <laughs> I fucking hate that bitch. And like, no, there's a point. Like, you do a mission for Jack, right? No, yeah. actually, you do... It is Jack, I think. And it... straight after it, her and Miranda are having an argument. Yes. And Jack is like, M- Miranda won't admit that what Cerberus did to me was wrong. Okay. Right? And Miranda's like, uh, I something like, I, you know, Cerberus' experiments are... are useful or we learn new intel from them or whatever and then i had a choice to either tell miranda to back off or jack to back off and in that instance i was like well miranda's wrong because jack the poor child has been tortured her whole life so i was like miranda back off and from that point onwards she was like well fuck you then and so she was disloyal to me now even though i did her loyalty mission she was disloyal to me for for doing that and when i went to talk to her in her office anytime i tried to talk to her about anything she like she's real, <laughs> dude. I, tr- I made her a cup of tea. Like <laughs> anytime I tried to talk to her, <laughs> all she'd say was, uh, "Why did you go talk to your friend Jack?" And I, that was it. She would not. You couldn't actually bring her back around at any no. point. It's it's the same with uh, you if off. you tell Jack to back off. Jack becomes disloyal and essentially says the same thing. So you can't get them all loyal. No. Oh no, no, you, can't, you can't. Unless you're like ultimate paragon, yeah, if you're ultimate like ultimate renegade, paragon or renegade, you, you can, can get. So, which yeah. somehow so by fucking, being the biggest bastard, you can actually make both of them loyal. Yeah, you can because they're kind of. It's more that I think they respect you out of fear. So it's like you have two ways. You could either you gain people's respect because you're so admirable, <laughs> or you gain people's respect because you're so ruthless. I think and it's it's quite funny being renegade ruthless. though, especially consider one of the one of the news reporters in it. Al Jelani. That's three, I think. No, no, she's in all three of them. And oh, she's, is she? She's a bitch to you. And all, she keeps trying to be a bitch to you all the time. And you can be a prick back. And in the second and third one, you just get the option to punch her in the face. And it's just great. <laughs> it's hard, the minute it comes up, it's like, yeah, bitch. And this why, podcast does yeah. not recommend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And why is that great, Eric? <laughs> How did it feel? <laughs> um, but yeah, so I just finished that. So I'm going to move on to Mass Effect 3 uh, to carry on the save file. But I'm also... I recommend to... when that comes up, if you wait longer, you do get a positive option. Just let you know. When in, in Mass Effect 3. 
Oh, when, 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 the reporter, the when the reporter... Are you yeah. still on that? Yeah, I'm still on that. I'm <laughs> now trying to redeem myself because I just realized what I said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, much like Miranda, she's not real, Eric. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Then, and then the, another game I'm looking forward to playing is the Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order because I've liked all the footage I've seen. Um, I saw the start when you were playing it, actually, Eric. And mm-hmm. the, I think the lightsaber effects on it are fantastic. Oh, the lightsaber's cool. Really, really good. And the way it's used, but I think as well, mainly because it's a platformer, because like there's a lot of climbing and jumping and that kind of stuff. That <laughs> it's just it's, it's nice, nice to see, to see a, a new Star Wars, Star Wars game, game that, that isn't just, just a cash a grab. grab. Battlefront, Battlefront. <laughs> so, so which people are loving now? People are loving now, I think, because they've made a lot of yeah. appropriate changes to mm-hmm. the game. When it first came out, I can't believe that that actually launched and was full price. The actual yeah, that was shocking. With like three modes or something and no story mode from, oh, yeah, from, a, from a developer that made like really you know well liked games mm-hmm. I can't believe the effort they put in that so I think it's just uh, it's been long needed a new uh, Star Wars yeah, game that's kind of exciting so I suppose with Star Wars it was like, that. if it wasn't Battlefront it was kind of a hack and slash like Force Unleashed or something yeah that's true yeah yeah. so it's yeah. nice to get almost like I a, do one day hope that they make a Star Wars game where you're like Mass Effect no, I, like God kind, of War. they kind of did that. I, I kind of, I'd like. I remember there was one advertised before. Was it called Thirteen Thirteen or something like that? Yeah. Yes. Which was like playing a sort of um, <clears throat> smuggler, or a smuggler, like a Han Solo esque character. I, I'd love to see a Star Wars game like that because I think and that was being possibly done the Jedi thing to death. Written by Amy Hennig. Was it really? Yeah. Yeah, I'd love. I'd love. And like they closed, get that back up. Close the whole thing. Open it. It's not going to happen because the studio's gone. Fuck. Because <laughs> I think it was... That looked great. I was really excited about that. I could be wrong here, uh, but I think it was the studio behind, or at least they had some sort of connection with the studio, Visceral Games. Um, Which one? Visceral, I think. Really? The makers of Dead Space. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. They're gone. They're gone? Yep. What? Yeah, EA just fired them. You could tell we did our research. I, I think <laughs> Adam knows shit. Yeah, <laughs> me and Eric are just like going in blind, like oh, like games, be, yeah, I, fun, yeah. Like I got be mixing studios here, but I know that Visceral Games were disbanded by EA, right. and I know that that um, Star Wars thirteen thirteen was closed down, and Amy Hennig was. I don't know whether she because the studio was disbanded or she left EA after that. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a shame. That's, I'm looking yeah. forward to that. But anyway, I'm looking forward to uh, jumping into this new Star Wars game as well. Um, and then yeah play Mass Effect 3 so I'm a, a, on a bit of a sci-fi binge at the moment so that's where and I play as fucking goats <laughs> and you're <laughs> fucking floppy goats <laughs> do you know what's interesting is that you went way more in depth into Goat Simulator than any other game we've spoken about today. Like everything else is like Mass Effect Two. Yeah, I played it. Didn't like it. Uh, Heavy Rain. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Red Dead Redemption. Yeah, that was my game in here. Yeah, it was pretty class. Goat Simulator. You can go to see like the devil. <laughs> it was like really adept. So if you've taken anything away from the first ever episode of this here podcast, it's to play Goat Simulator. It's free, and we're sponsored by it. I'm only joking. Uh, okay, so I think that concludes the first episode. Uh, we possibly went on quite long, um, but I hope you enjoyed listening, and we will return with episode two, where we look at our top games for 2011. All right, bye now. Bye.